How many of you have hurt people you love? Amen. Some of you didn't even respond. No, let me, let me, re rewind. <laughs> How many of you, remember, you're in the house of the Lord. How many of you have hurt someone you love? You didn't mean to, but you hurt them. You may not have meant, oh, oh now all of a sudden, now everybody. You didn't mean to, but you, you hurt them. Amen. And why is that? Because we're, we're just, as human beings, we're, we're, we're pretty complex. Hi, my name's Angel Falcon, and I'm honored to be uh, before you here today. We believe that there's no greater responsibility entrusted to us as believers uh, to give you, teach you the Word of God. I trust that you will be richly blessed by what you're about to hear. Remember that as we increase in the knowledge of God's Word, His blessings are sure to fall upon us. Trust you will be blessed. As you know, we dedicated um, the month of February to um, a series on, on relationships. Um, we know that scripture, since the very beginning in Genesis, the Word of God reveals to us, from Genesis to Revelation, the value of relationship. And how committed, say committed, committed. God is to, to that. Um, we, we may fall short with one another. We, you, you know, what I realize, you know, one of the first things God said in, in the midst of creation when he created man, right? After he had created man, after he had created an environment, the Garden of Eden, uh, he concluded in, in Genesis chapter 2, and we don't need to turn there, but chapter 2, verse 18, it says, It isn't good that man should be alone, but I will make him a helper compatible to him. Now understand this, that, again, this just points to the institution of marriage, but it also covers throughout Scripture, it covers the need for relationship. You don't have to be married, but we 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 have relationships all around us we have relationships with 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 our parents with our siblings we have relate which is the first process of you know dealing with society you know it's funny one time i saw i remember i used to fight a lot with my i had it was me and three sisters i was the only boy back then Till later on in life, my mom had a, 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 another son, a, right, another brother. And, um, but I remember, you know, we used to fight all the time. And my mom used to just be at wit's end. And so it's funny because I see it, you know, I saw it in my kids growing up. And, I, you know, and I see it now again. I'm able to witness how, they have, you know, kids have a love that, they're brothers and sisters, but they have a love and hate relationship, and they're always, they're always at each other. You know, it's funny, and then, the, and then they're defending each other. You know, uh, on the other hand, right? And and the strange thing is, is that you know, I remember when God told me, He says, D -d -d "Look at this. What do you think is going on?" And to me, I hate, I hate when they don't treat each other right. You know, but He says, "But they're 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 developing." Ties. They're developing relationships. They're developing their emotions. They're, it's a process, and it kind of took me back when I saw that perspective of it. And uh, the sad thing is, is that in relationship, there's there's all kinds of dynamics. But Scripture is very clear that it is a precious thing to God because everything about God and us 
had to do with his willingness to enter a deeper and more meaningful relationship with all his children. Sadly enough, he doesn't have that luxury. God doesn't have the luxury. He, he wishes that all men come to the saving knowledge of his son, right? But not everybody responds. My point is, is that it's important to God. And there's another scripture verse, you know, that I just want to just make reference to. Even, even Jesus summarizes the whole law into the royal law. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. Everything hangs. You, if you fulfill those two commandments, you fulfill all the law. Fulfill it all. And so the dynamics of this beautiful things. And then Jesus prayed in John 17. He makes this simple prayer. He says, may they be one just as you and I, Father, are one. Relationally. You don't think Jesus was challenged with the disciples? One time he came up to them and they said, what, what are you arguing about? The Bible says they kept silent. But they didn't know Jesus was omniscient. And he knew what they were arguing. They were arguing about after Jesus dies, goes to the cross, who's going to be the man? Which one among us will step in Jesus' role? <laughs> and then Jesus just blew him up by saying, the one that serves the most, the one that humbles himself the most, shall serve, not be served. Very interesting. And so, it's no mistake, God is intensely, in, intensively relational. And God calls us as His creation to be intentional in our relationship. Now, please don't be discouraged and assume that we're only talking about relationships between a man and a woman in, in matrimony. We're, talk, we're, we're, we're dealing with the huge perspective of relationship, not only in the marriage, but with our children and, 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 and our loved ones and our neighbors, even our co-workers. That's when you really are tested. And even you get you want to get really tested, come to church. <laughs> yeah. Go to the mall. Go go to Walmart. <laughs> when you gotta deal with people, whenever you have to deal with people, it, there's 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 certain dynamics. But I wanna I want to again. So, you know, God, all that God is, the very reason for creation was so that he can exchange his love and, and get his creation to share in his creation, right? In his universe. There, there's a plan for God. Understand this. God has a plan. And that plan is to develop a group of people that had the choice to choose him or not. And in the end, those people that choose to, to embrace that relationship and walk in, in, in the, the richness of that relationship, God will take to heaven, but then will bring him down. And God will use those people, his redeemed Amen. To rule the universe. Amen. Amen. God has a plan. Amen. And it all has to do, and it begins with relationships. That's why last week I, I shared very clearly, and shout out to our sister Rose and Twi, who gave a good word on Wednesday. If you weren't here, it's a good word. 
sometimes I got to listen to her real close because of her accent, you know. But I'm, I must have been divinely, God must have divinely anointed me. But she seemed like she was slower. And I can distinctively hear those, <sighs> that good word. So appreciate you, your obedience. But, you know, God has, his plan was all from the, from the get-go. It's about relationships. And here's something that's really important to you, and I briefly touched it last week, is that the quality and strength of the relationships that we have now, that we develop, that we are working in, that we, you know, it is, it is, it is vital to our success. If your relationship with your spouse is messed up, your future is looking bleak. If there's no exchange in the relationship, relationships can't be one-sided. No matter how much God loves you, if you choose to rebel and just go your own way, all of the love of God that He wants to display on the individual is... My point is, is that 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 our our relationship really is is how we develop it, how we honor it, how we maintain it will determine our success, as God intended. I believe that to be true. Let me tell you, if you don't work in your relationship with your supervisor at your job, your manager, whoever, whatever role he functions, if your relationship with him is strained, you will never succeed in that company. Amen. It's interesting when you work in a relationship and you form those bonds, you know, uh, uh, again, you know, there's, there's a sense of support you know, that comes because of it, that will help us in, in times. You know, I, I have built relationships that have opened doors for me in the workforce. I have built, I have built, a, 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 my character has built a trust to management that they say, I can trust him with that because he was faithful in the little. <laughs> And well, again, I'm just, I just veered off a little bit, but understand that your relationship is so vitally important. And what we're going to enter into today is some of the wisdom concerning relationship, uh, or maybe, maybe better said, some of the um, uh, virtues of relationships, some of the things, that, some of the, 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 the va uh, elements of relationships that are so critical that we understand so that we can walk in, in, in the beauty of, of them. But if you're living and breathing, how many of you, you know, you know, you, you let me sit, let me, I got to be careful how I say this. How many of you have hurt people you love? Amen. Amen. Some of you didn't even respond. Uh, let me, let me, re rewind. <laughs> How many of you, remember, you're in the house of the Lord. How many of you have hurt someone you love? You didn't mean to, but you hurt them. You may not have meant, oh, oh now all of a sudden, now everybody. You didn't mean to, but you, you hurt them. <laughs> And why is that? Because we're, we're just, as human beings, we're, we're, we're pretty complex. And God knows that. Amen. And that's why God is not only a relational God, that's why he instilled in his word topics concerning relationships that are vital for us to understand the, 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 the value of them. Ain't easy. Relationships comes with its complexities. 
I, I know way too many people who are, were absolutely in love with their spouse. But through the period of years and sometimes even months, as short as months, you know, what did I do? <laughs> I'm talking to somebody. Amen. What did I do? So it's relationships requires um, some work. I don't know what is it about us that sometimes we think that everybody should think the way I think. <laughs> There's people that they're so messed up that if you don't think the way they think, they don't want nothing to do with you. He, that person's going to be a lonely individual. So I want to talk about, um, um, you know, key virtues to to healthy relationships. And again, this is I'm addressing this in a broad sense, though it touches marriage, but it really touches every every element of you know relationship. I want you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter five. Just want to read a few scripture verses here, because the first thing you know about God that He makes very clear to us <clears throat> is that He tells us that in in Ephesians chapter 5 I want to begin reading at verse 1 I, I, I love the scripture verse it says therefore be imitators say imitators the, the original Greek word for that is mimic that means be like act like reflect like God in other words, mimic him, love like him, right? And, go, and he goes on, he says, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God, a sweet smelling aroma. And so the point here is that we're called to, to this, you know, again, when God says walk in love, walk in brotherly love. I mean, walk like, you know, that, you know, like I'm to walk among you as you're my brother, you're my sister, you know. And I mean, I love you as much. I, listen, I have a couple of siblings. I got, well, including me, would, well, there's five all together, right? So I, I love them dearly. But I, I, I got to tell you, I love you as much. I'm engaged. You know what I'm saying? I've seen, you know, we have a, a, a relationship that has spent years and some of you are newcomers you know um, and 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 there's a love that comes from God that just divinely connects you Amen. Amen. and the beauty about this kind of love that God's call us to is that it my love is not predicated on your performance <laughs> Now, you might challenge my love because you might be arrogant. You might challenge my love because you're very opinionated. You might challenge my love because you always criticize it. <laughs> but I still got to love you. Right? So the beautiful thing about God is that we're, we're called. God has called us to, to walk in, in, in this love. And, um, you know... Um, and we need to give ourselves to that. To walk and love just like Jesus loved. He had, you know, it doesn't mean that you accept everything. And we're going to talk about that as well. There's certain dynamics. You know, do you know that I can love the sinner? Not like what they do. Not like what they represent. You know? But I can still love them as God's creation. 
That's why God teaches us that we should, you know, we, we, we be careful not to judge someone. You may judge their actions as contrary to the word of God, but you can't judge them. Like I remember one time in my ignorance, long time ago, I think I was saved maybe a couple of months. I remember when I looked at this young man, he was, everything about him in the outside was bad. Bad. His reputation at the job was bad. And I remember saying, wow, God, he, he like be the last guy to come to God. That's what I told him. And, you know, I mean, I didn't say it to anybody. This was just me and God as I was working, talking to him. Boy, I'd be the last guy. Do you know he was the first guy to come to God? I was shocked. One day he was at my desk looking for pornography. Was shocked that he couldn't find any because a couple of ways down there was plenty of them <coughs> plastered near the freezer area. You, you had to close your eyes when you went past that place. And I remember he came he, when he came over to my desk. He, he what he found was some tracks, and I had been re recently just. I've been reading this book about vision and by David Wilkerson and some 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 really good truth and we started to talk about it and I told him about that book and little did I know that he was an avid reader he went bought the book as God as I stand before God in this holy altar there was a huge hallway in my job and I was on my way to you know going to my area my department and he was coming down the next day this was the next day that I shared the word right the next day he came a totally when I looked at him I knew whoa totally saved God had he had given his life to God he read the book cover to cover mm, amen and he was a changed man. Till this day, he was a changed man. Amen. The first, first individual, his name is Robert Richter. First individual I ever led to the Lord. And it was in a, a beautiful thing. And, and the guy had issues. But he loved God. And you saw the transformation that took place in his life. It, it's So never... Judge a book by its cover. God really taught me really quick. That that's what you get for thinking that I can't reach him. So when God tells us that we're to, you know, again, this, this, this walk of love, and I, I, I need to move a little quicker here. The call to work means that we're to express, you know, that affection, uh, goodwill. We're to uh, conduct ourselves accordingly. Um, and um, we need to really learn to display the love of God. And we know that scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 13, super favorite scripture verse of mine. Actually, these scripture verses was was my first message that I ever preached back in 1976. And I remember when I was preaching it, I was so nervous. And what added to my nervousness was that some drunk guys came and sat down in the back. <laughs> I said, oh my Lord. And I remember just praying for those guys and, and just God had a, a tremendous, tremendous thing. But there's when God says you walk in this love, God has said you, we need to walk in this God kind of love. Now, any relationship, I don't care what it is, if it doesn't have these elements, these what we call key virtues, these are fruits of the Spirit of God. If they don't have any of this, then, then your relationship is not going to be healthy. Healthy relationships requires us to understand certain, you know, uh, uh, issues, uh, uh, elements of relationship. 
And it is, it, and I'll tell you, one of them is, you know, if we don't, well, look, look at what the scripture says. You know, one of the beautiful things about God's kind of love is that it suffers a long time. <laughs> Love is patient, patient, patient. And that word literally means tolerant. God is, in other words, uh, God ex God's love is tolerant. We will talk a little bit about that later on. But uh, it, the beautiful thing about it, that it, it just, it just, it's, you know, it, it allows room to grow. One of the biggest problems with us is that sometimes we think, we think that we should, everybody should be at my level. You've been coming to church long enough to know better. Well, but not everybody grows at the same. Now, not everybody here commits as diligently as we should. <laughs> But, uh, but if we're walking in this God kind of love that we're called to, then our we value our relationship by being patient. Not everybody going to be like you. And I know, listen, I, I'm pretty, I, I consider myself, it is my opinion, maybe not God's, but, I, you know, I hope. As I search my own heart, I try to be very understanding. But then there's certain things that, to me, maybe because of my personality some things I don't mind helping anybody but when people don't help themselves and then demand help I got a problem with that and and I make sure that I tell them graciously and lovingly because just because you're walking in love doesn't mean that there's no disagreement disciples were full of disagreement God didn't quit on them you know what amazes me? Jesus knew Judas was stealing from the treasury and he didn't fire him. I'm saying, what's up with that? I'm not saying, I'm not condoning that if you know, I'm not condoning it, but what I'm saying is God gives people some leeway. You know what I'm saying? To examine their own hearts and to, to grow. You know, can you imagine if God, let, let me just say this very clearly. Not everybody that steps up here in this altar is perfect. We should strive to. We should know better. We should be examining our hearts. I bet not everybody up here is perfect. Because we're all a work in progress. But one thing we better do, we better, we better learn to love our fellow man like God loved them. And so we're to display this God kind of love. He says love suffers a long time. In other words, we're patient with each other. We just, you know, we don't have, we cannot insist on our own ways. Though what we're standing for is true. We can share that truth, but then after that, we have to allow God to deal with them concerning that truth. The Bible says love is kind. It is respectful. Yeah. It is respectful about other people's, you know, uh, challenges. You, you, res you know, I may not agree with them, but I love them as a person. I have to love them as a person. Oh, but they're arrogant. Don't, it doesn't change the fact that they're God's creation. Amen. God's kind of love is, un, is not envious, isn't jealous, right? It isn't, you know, a, envy is that spirit that just, it wants, it wants what it wants when it wants it, you know, and I don't care whether, you know, whether it hurts you or not, they, you know, this is, you know, envious, is there's a danger. There's healthy ambitions and then there are unhealthy ambitions. That's why God says promotion comes from Him. Don't you, try, don't you pursue it, I'll bring it. <laughs> Hmm? 
Love does not parade itself. Uh, it isn't boastful or prideful or, you know, doesn't brag. It isn't puffed up, you know. It doesn't behave itself rudely. In other words, unbecoming. It, it's respectful, again. You know, it doesn't seek its own. It doesn't insist in its own way. Especially when it comes to, to, to you know, you know, if you're in a marriage relationship, you know, you know, if you're going to buy a house, it, you better be in agreement with the house. No matter how good my intention was, if I was going to buy a house, a new house, you know, uh, and not tell my wife about it. <laughs> might be sleeping in the house all alone. <laughs> Like, you know, again, it, it doesn't insist in its own way. It is not, I love this, it is not easily provoked or overly sensitive. It thinks no evil. It's not malicious in their intent. It doesn't rejoice in iniquity. And this is, this is a beautiful thing about relationship because you cannot have a healthy relationship if you lie to each other. Why do, people, why do couples lie to each other? You don't plan to lie. But you know, if you tell them the truth, all hell's gonna break out. <laughs> you know, if you tell them the truth, he or she may not cook tonight. <laughs> they might sleep in the living room. See, so you know, so we don't plan to lie, but then we say, you know, maybe just a little white lie. A lie's a lie's a lie. Either way you color it, right? But any relationship that's based on lies. Isn't healthy. Any relationships that's based on on mental abuse, mental control. I have seen marriages that could have been amazing be murdered, killed because of the actions of the other. Because of the selfishness of the other. Goes on to say that, you know, again, you know, here's, here's, and again, when it talks about it, it doesn't rejoice in sin or what's wrong, it rejoices in the truth. Relationships must be based on honesty. Because the fact of the matter is, if, if I lie to my wife one time, you know what's the first thing she's going to think? What else is a lie? He tells me he loved me, but is that a lie too? Does he want me because of my money? <laughs> Yo, no, let me tell you, some people are flaky that way. Yes, they are. Uh, just saying. If you lie once, everything. You know something about lie? Lie violates the fundamental foundation of relationship with this trust. You cannot build a relationship if there's no trust in what you're saying. That's why infidelity destroys relationships. The Bible even tells us that, <clears throat> you know, we know that scripture, you know, adultery destroys marriages. But the scripture talks about even if you commit adultery in your heart. Physically, you didn't do it physically, but in your heart you did. Because in your heart, <laughs> entertaining other thoughts, you're elsewhere. <laughs> I like to meddle in that a little bit. Talking about relationships, and the, again, these are these are virtues, truths that that really help 
maintain a healthy uh, relationship, whether it's a friendship. And again, you can exchange these principles, but it's in the Word of God. The Word of God is so rich concerning how you carry yourself and how we need to display all of these things that will maintain a healthy relationship. And let me just throw this in as well, because some of you saying, some of you, you Pastor, you are so right. You are so right. I'm ready to throw my, I'm ready to start all over again. <laughs> Are there times when you have to? Sadly, yes. Amen. I've experienced that. But I do believe this. I believe that you better have done, you have better tried all you know to do. Because God, you know, again, it takes two people to make a meaningful relationship. So long as you work it, it'll work. When you quit, it's just over. And I realize some, some relationship needs uh, uh, some CPR. <laughs> but I like to believe that I have seen God resuscitate marriage from the brinks of death. But it took two people. One, one it, it required repentance from one and forgiveness from the other. Are you learning something? Bible tells us that this love that God has called us to walk in it it's a love that bears all things you know the beauty about this real love supports bears supports but sometimes you got to carry some stuff sometimes sometimes we say things to us that so deeply hurts us now you, I know you know what I'm talking about. That if we hold on to what's said, it'll be like a cancer in the relationship. And if you allow, if you don't, if you don't learn to forgive, that will cause that to be an op unforgiveness causes to ferment, you know, to ferment and spread and kill your love for that individual that you used to just so you were so goo goo gaga with <laughs> takes work I don't know any marriage that haven't been challenged if you haven't if you have never if you married and you haven't you haven't suffered anything you must have been married just for a day <laughs> That was just revelation. That just came in. It might have been just, you only been, you know. But every one of us, every one of us are challenged. But every one of us, love, we, we, we deal with what we have to deal with out of the foundation of our love for one another. What we have is more important than what we go through. But how we deal with what we go through sustains what we have. <sighs> Church has to teach more of this because sometimes we sometimes we confuse love from sensuality. <laughs> oh, this isn't. We confuse love and lust. See, love is the giving of one another. And the exchange of one another, right? Where lust is self-satisfaction. 
I don't care who I'm with, <laughs> so long as I get mine. <coughs> Rudely put. <coughs> Selfish is always about me. It's got to be my way. <laughs> you can be married, and if you lust after your wife, you're sinning. Take some notes, Ben. You're gonna have to deal with this on Wednesday. On Wednesday. I just I just threw that. <laughs> Alright. It sustains. Love is supportive. It looks to encourage. It looks to build up. And that's what it is. And then sometimes, but again, you know, it, it requires the, the the desire from both parties to work it, right? Scripture goes on to say that um, um, love, love believes, it believes in each other. There's an expectation, not unrealistic expectation, but you believe in your heart that you're going to, you know, that what you're in you're all in, and they're all in. So you believe in the relationship that'll take you. You know, too many of us, beloved, we settle. We settle for things, and and you know, and, and then expect an outcome when all the flags. Sometimes we're so disillusioned. You know, uh, let me put it this way: sometimes we're so blinded to have someone that you don't see all the flags. So really, it's your need is, is clouding your judgment. The reality. <laughs> oh, gee. Love. Again, it believes all things. It hopes all things. I love that. Because when you love, there's an expectation that together... No matter what we're facing, doesn't mean we're not going to go through challenges. Doesn't not, not going to always mean that we're always going to agree that I might step on your toes, that it might be a bad day, you know, and you might have snapped. Sometimes I, in my day, sometimes I, I'm a little just... You know, I guess my, you know, I'm, I'm going to confess, I'm, I'm before God, and I, I just got to make it real to you. There's sometimes when you're just, you know, you, you, you're at wit's end, you know, with certain things, and, and then you go home, and then you, that shortness, you, you bring home. Now, my, my wife puts, she calls me out every time. No me hable how así. <laughs> So, how do you translate that? Don't, you know, in other words, don't, don't talk to me in that manner. Like, you know, hold up, you know, and all of a sudden, oh, oh. I'm sorry, babe. No me hables through how. Haven't you ever had a day that, you know, man, and you're stressed and you're thinking about this and that went on and this went on and all of a sudden, you know, you're home, your guard's down, you're not defensive and all of a sudden, whew, running out of time but it's it, it, and here's it closes uh, in verse 7 it says this God kind of love endures it perseveres it is is not wishy-washy this uh, this endures all things this God kind of love is able to endure all things whatever it is I like to know that whether we're in good times or bad times that my wife's going to stick with me. If she only sticks with me when it's good time, I'm going to start, I'm going to start to question what am I investing myself in here, right? That's the reality. Scripture tells us, you know, uh, again, we're called in, in, in Luke um, 6, 35 and, and, and 36. And I got to move this along, but you're going to get this. Uh, God says we need to be, learn to be merciful, just as the Father is merciful. We need to go, you know, mercy means that I got to go beyond 
one another's faults. We have faults. We got moments. And if we don't keep those, if we don't keep our hearts right, you know, we can allow uh, our emotions, our circumstances to get the best of us, and then we hurt those we love most. <clears throat> it's almost like we build. Listen, I've been to homes where people were married for years, years. But there's a huge, they live in the same house, they sleep in the same bedroom, but there's a, there's, there's a wall between them worse than Fort Knox. <laughs> they don't even talk. <laughs> so busy, so busy. So... I know way too many people very effective in providing for the needs of the house, okay, and neglecting the relationship of the house. Amen. So they have everything, but they're all unhappy. And most of them will tell you that I'd rather have less and have you. I'll take that. As weak as it was, I'll take that. <laughs> I, I'm just believing that it really just hit you so hard that it just stunned you a little bit and, and it kind of affected. But I, I'll take that. Be merciful. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 6, and you know, again, you know, God who is rich in mercy, even when we were undeserving, he was rich in mercy. He was rich in mercy. So God showed you how much he loved you by sending his son, right? When you didn't even deserve it. That's right. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Can you love that way? Can you love someone who just keeps stepping on you? Can you love your enemy like Jesus says? It's easy to love everybody that loves you. That's easy. Anybody can do that. But can you love some knucklehead? Thank you, Lord. Respect. Respect, beloved. Respect. Be merciful. Ephesians 4.32 tells us, be kind to one another. Be tenderhearted. Be forgiving. We've addressed kindness. You know, kindness is just to be friendly, considerate. It has to do with displaying, you know, God's compassion. A tenderhearted means that, you know, you easily move to love. To be considerate, again, to, to even have pity, understanding. <laughs> to be soft-hearted, as opposed to being hard. It's easy to, you know... <clears throat> you ever been so angry that you don't want to hear nothing? You ain't ready to hear nothing? <laughs> you, you, <clears throat> if there was a guillotine, you know... <clears throat> <laughs> coldness, coldness. Spe scriptures talks about the hardness of the heart. There's some people that have hardness of the heart in relationships. And you should never allow your heart to be cold towards anybody. Even though, matter of fact, even those that have hurt you, you better learn to forgive. Again, going back to what I make reference to from the word, Jesus says you need to love your enemy. What good is it that you love those that love you? Anybody can do that. God loved you when you were not, when you were a knucklehead wannabe thug. <laughs> Out there, you know, uh, to me, 
Sometimes I really thank God for the memory of my past. Not that I live in my past, but I remember what God took me out of. Amen. Amen. I got some sisters and brothers here that they have a, they have they have their stories. And you know, one day I would like to have a testimony night. <laughs> That's my cue. <laughs> I got to talk to the worship team about this. I don't know. <laughs> Here, um, you know what forgiveness? Again, remember, be kind to one another. Be tenderhearted. Amen. Forgiving, forgiving, forgiving one another. What does that mean? You know, Forgiving has to do with allowing room for error and shortcomings. Because forgiveness brings hope. Forgiveness allows grace to restore. I'm not standing before you telling you that this is an easy thing. But I have seen, I have seen, I have seen what God is able to do when there are two yielded vessels that are willing to forgive and get past their differences. All of what we do in life, how we treat one another, Sometimes, sometimes we offend each other. We offend each other because of certain comments. We offend each other because maybe you're, you give a self-righteous attitude simply because you know the faults of others and you're quick to express and judge when you yourself got some issues though nobody knows we should never look down on anybody and there have been decisions people have made people near and dear to me that I didn't like but I that hurt me but does that change our love for them? Are we, can we get disappointed and still love them? You better. Because if you don't, you will so grieve the Spirit of God that you will stay stuck in the prison of unforgiveness. And, and then you wonder why you're stuck. Now you wonder why this heaviness, this heaviness upon me. I know what it is to be hurt. But if I don't let go of that hurt, then I won't, I won't ever allow God to heal me. And take me through the process of restoration, amen, and hope as to his purpose and plans for us both. How serious are you about your relationship? What virtues are you displaying? It's so easy to see the false in others. And God is committed through his word to get you to a place to start looking at your own heart yeah he's not saying that they don't have issues but first look at your issues
I believe that the Spirit of God, this topic that we've been addressing is such a vital part of His kingdom, such a vital part of His Word, such a huge part. That if we get better at it, there's so much more God can do. If we can just get past our shortcomings. It amazes me that, and, and sometimes as a, as, a, as, a, as a pastor now for 26 years, serving God for 43 years this year, Going into 30, uh, 30, 44. I realized that he called me unto himself and even into ministry while yet perfecting me. Right? It's amazing that God can call people, see gifts in people and and though, so he sees past everything else and calls you anyway because he believes in you. There are some of us here today that have broken relationships, whether it's your spouse, children, friend, co worker. That you really need to see God's heart to direct you. Now, because of the complexity of relationship, I realize that sometimes you just need to forgive people for you. Whether they receive it or not, Amen. that's on them. But if you're going to want to move on, you got to close those chapters in your life so that God can write some new ones. <coughs> I am not here to tell you, oh, you know, because I know that the, because of the complexity, no, there's, there's nothing um, I could ever say that will cover every aspect of all of the specific details concerning why things, why relationships were lost, why were they broken, why are they not working. The, the complexities are, are diverse, to say the least. But what I am saying, you need to be right. Guard your heart from bitterness. Guard your heart from unforgiveness. Seek to do the right thing. Seek to love unconditionally in spite of the fact that they've hurt you. Because that's what God would want. There comes a time in everyone's life where you must want to do what's right before God than anything else. Value. Now I believe, I believe that there's hope. Hope for those that have gone and I mean relationships have died and you've passed on. I realize I'm talking to people who are single as well. But as we start valuing the relationship that we have with God and one another, <laughs> sometimes we say we think that we're, we're, we're praying for someone to make us complete. You don't, don't pray for someone to make you complete. Pray for someone that will accept you completely. 
<laughs> oh man, I like that. Because <laughs> we're, we're in a process. Don't, please, don't sit there, look at me, and think for one moment that everything was, is amazing. We've had times when we disagreed and there were things sometimes I said that hurt her and that's when she said, no me hables así. <laughs> but our love for one another helped us work through those, those precious moments and and there were times when it was, ooh, and then, there, I mean, and I, I got to confess, I mean, my, you know, the, the percentage, if you look at percentages, you know, 5% of the time, maybe we have a dis disagreement, at least in my book, she might, her, her percentage might be different. <laughs> but I so value how we've learned to process the challenges, you know, and respect each other while we're working those things out and, you know, and, and valuing how she feels. Sometimes I don't understand why she feels that way, but does that, does that, does that exclude her, how she feels? No, we ha I have to value that, respect that, and try to understand why she feels that way. So any meaningful relationships requires these virtues to be in place. And we just scratched the surface here today, but we need, we desperately need to really go to God with this. I think sometimes you don't think God knows how many relationships have failed you? Maybe your father wasn't there for you. Maybe your mother wasn't there for you. Maybe the, both of them weren't there for you. You don't think God knows that? You don't think that God sees how vulnerable you've been and how much you desperately want to be loved that you really gave your heart to, to people who weren't ready to love you as you should have been. Value. Value your relationship. And you better work at it. And you better let go of unforgiveness. Amen. By saying all that, there are times when a relationship is so broken so unrepairable that there's a need to move on. Is it God's will? No, we see clearly in the Word of God. But there are some things strictly in the Word of God that He has to allow it because of the hardness of the heart of people. I say that because I don't want you to come out of here with condemnation. But I do want to let you know that in the sight of God, you better be, you better make sure in your heart that you have done everything possible to breathe life in that relationship. I want you to stand, please. I want you to hold each other's hands across the aisle. 